headlines say the dire wolf is back. Well, not exactly. Here's what back actually means and where the real science is today. We'll rank 10 comebacks, Mammoth, Dodo and more by status and the biggest blocker for each. If you have dreamed of a Jurassic Park world, this is the no hype version. Let's go. Dire wolf comeback. How close are we? Not very. Dire wolves split from grey wolves a long time ago. There's no proof they mixed. So a dire wolf today would be a modern wolf with a few edits. What do we have right now? Ancient DNA that says dire wolves with their own branch. Some media attention about gene editing, but zero peer-reviewed pups with real dire wolf traits. Translation, early days. The big roadblock is time and complexity. You can't undo millions of years with a few gene tweaks. We don't even have the full recipe. Skull shape, bite strength, behavior, many genes and the environment shape all that. What would count as real progress? Show one clear trait that works in the real world. Maybe a blood change that helps with the cold. Or a face bone change you can measure. Have an outside lab confirm it. Then share a plan, breeding, animal care rules, and where they live without hurting wild habitats. Until then, call it what it is, an early proxy project. Cool idea, not a resurrection. Next up, a giant bird with an even bigger hurdle, editing bird egg cells. Giant mower comeback. How close are we really? Short answer? Not close. Birds are the boss level of de-extinction. You can't just edit an embryo. You need primordial germ cells, otherwise known as PGCs, the starter cells that make eggs and sperm. Then you need a surrogate to carry that edited line. For moa, the surrogate has to be a big bird, a ratite, like an emu or ostrich. Different egg size, different shell, different incubation and parenting. That's two big walls before we even start climbing. The big roadblock, bird germ line, plus surrogate scale, Getting edited primordial germ cells to pass through the germline in rat heights is hard. And matching egg size, heat, timing and parental care across species is a headache. Plus ecology still calls the shots. Predators, rousing pressure and habitat decide the ending in New Zealand. What would count as real progress? Show a rat hide surrogate that reliably makes edited chicks with the targeted trait. Then show a plan for a captive founding group. Numbers, housing, health checks, and breeding steps. And a predator control roadmap in New Zealand that conservation partners actually sign. Only then are we moving from pitch deck to pilot. Until then, call Giant Mower a moonshot in the early stage. Great cinema, thin receipts. Next up, cloning that once worked until the newborn didn't survive. Purity and Ibex or Picardo comeback. How close are we? Closer than never, but not close. This is the first extinct animal ever cloned. In 2003, a Picardo kid was born. It died within minutes from lung defects. The birth is proof the door can open. The death shows why the hallway is full of traps. The big roadblock, living cells and newborn survival. We need high quality donor cells or induced pluripotent stem cells made from preserved tissue. Those cells must handle somatic cell nuclear transfer without falling apart. We also need surrogates that can carry cross species pregnancies without dangerous complications. And when a kid is born, it must breathe on its own, keep warm and grow. One brief flight didn't prove any of that. What would count as real progress? A repeatable pipeline. Start with living fibroblasts or induce pluripotent stem cells from museum or biobank samples. Create embryos by somatic cell nuclear transfer that actually implant. Get at least one healthy full term kid with a documented Picardo genotype. Then publish a breeding plan that avoids inbreeding collapse, founder numbers, pairings, and genetic checks. Right now, the Pyrenean Ibex or Bacardo sits in the paused one-off bucket. Historically huge, yes. Functionally, we're still at show me a healthy kid, and then a second one, and a third. Next up, a frog so weird it broods babies in its stomach, and why embryos alone don't mean a comeback. 
Gastric brooding from comeback. How close are we? Short answer, early and quiet. This frog was biology's party trick. Mum swallowed fertilised eggs. She turned off stomach acid. Weeks later, she spread out live froglets, wild and real. In the lab, scientists later made early embryos using nuclear transfer, moving a nucleus from a body cell into an egg. Headlines popped. Then, silence. The big roadblock? Getting from embryo to a breeding line. Cloning amphibians is touchy. The nucleus must fully reset. Embryos often stall during early development. You have to carry them through gastrulations into healthy tadpoles, then survive to metamorphosis, then reach sexual maturity, and then produce multiple generations that breed without serious defects. Each step is a leak in the bucket. What would count as real progress? A repeatable ladder. Embryos, tadpoles, strong sub-adults with survival numbers anyone can order. Then a captive colony that reproduces on its own. Only after that should anyone whisper about sites for release and a plan for chytrid fungus, the disease that help wipe them out. No fungus plan, no comeback. Until those steps exist, poor gastric brooding frog work dormant. Not a failure, just an honest pause while the hard parts get solved. Next up, back to birds, an iconic North Atlantic ghost with nasty island logistics. Great Orc Comeback How close are we? Short answer, early and uphill. To do it, you must edit the primordial germ cells of a close cousin, think an alcid, like the razor bill. Then you have to prove those edits pass to real chicks. Then you have to breed a whole group, not just one bird. At the same time, you need a safe island plan, predator free, bite biosecurity, no rats in cargo, gear checks, quarantine rules, the lot, because one rat can undo a decade. The big roadblock is two programs at once. Bird germline editing is hard. Island logistics are harder. Great orcs nested on bare rock in rough seas. Any release must handle rats, foxes, gulls, and human landings. And the edited birds still have to act like orcs, dive, forage, court, and raise young in that harsh setting. If they can't do that, you made museum pieces, not wildlife. Show germline edited offspring in a surrogate alkyd line. Clear trait, clear inheritance. Then publish a partner approved island roadmap. Invasive control, landing rules, storm contingencies, long term monitoring, and who pays for all of it. Put names on the plan conservation groups, local authorities, ship operators, so it's more than a slide. For now, Call Great Orc work concept early. Not impossible, just a double black diamond mix of engineering and ecology. Next up, number five, Passenger Pigeon. Passenger Pigeon comeback. How close are we? Short answer, in the lab. Long game. This isn't just DNA, it's behavior. Passenger pigeons were a flocking machine. Huge flights, synced breeding, and forests that responded to their numbers. Any proxy bird has to fly and flock like the real thing, or the biology falls apart. The big roadblock. Bird germline and behaviour. You can edit a close cousin like the band-tailed pigeon, but those edits must pass through the primordial germ cells, the starter cells that make eggs and sperm, and show up in real chicks, and in their chicks. Next, the birds must flock and scale, turn, feed, court, and nest in big groups. If they don't, you build an odd pet, not a species. Then comes habitat. Modern forests are greatly different than they were in 1850. Packing thousands of birds into the wrong mix of trees and food is ecological roulette. What would count as real progress? Show germline transmitted edits that breed true over generations. Then run a pilot aviary flock, dozens of birds, and document coordinated flock behavior, group movement, group feeding, group nesting. Publish a release feasibility study with foresters and ecologists on board, sites, forest treatments, food cycles, and contingency plans. Status? In lab, long game. The genetics can move, the behavioral ecology will take longer. Next up, 
the internet's favourite meme bird that's actually a serious island engineering problem, the dodo. Dodo comeback. How close are we? Short answer? The genome is ready. The hard part is ahead. Yes, the genome is assembled. That's great. But genomes don't hatch chicks. The real work is in birds. You have to get your edits into the primordial germ cells inside a close pigeon lineage bird. Then you must raise many healthy chicks and build a founding group, not a one-off photo. Meanwhile, Mauritius is a chessboard. Predators, quarantine rules, dock checks, fight by security so one rat or one cat doesn't erase a decade. The big roadblock? Make viable edited chicks at scale and keep them alive where cats, rats and monkeys exist. An island release is not a stunt. It's predator control, quarantine and habitat work. So your restored birds do not become expensive snacks. What would count as real progress? Announce and show the first edited chicks in the target lineage. Then publish a Mauritian Wildlife Foundation approved roadmap. Predator fencing, disease screening, quarantine flows, post-release tracking, and who runs each step. Add a founding cohort plan with target numbers and genetic diversity goals. Status? In lab with real partners. But the steepest climb is still ahead. Next up, same era, different continent. Marsupials and the sharp end of in vitro fertilization and newborn survival, the thylacine. Thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger comeback? How close are we? Short answer, real laps, hard biology. This one is not just hype. There are real teams and real funding. The plan is clear. Edit a close marsupial relative, master IVF and embryo transfer, and raise healthy joeys into a founding group. Ambitious? And all of it has to work in sequence. The big roadblock? Marsupial reproduction. Embryos are tiny. Gestation is short. Newborns are as small as a jelly bean. They must crawl to a pouch, latch to a nipple, and survive weeks of changing milk phases. Do that with edited embryos, maybe in a cross-species surrogate, and every risk grows. Implantation, immune match, milk composition, microbiome, plus the stress of handling and hand-rearing if anything goes wrong. What would count as real progress? A documented embryo transfer, live birth in the chosen surrogate species with independent veterinary oversight, then survival through weaning, no quiet failures. After that, publish a cohort plan, target numbers, genetic diversity, facility capacity, health screening, and biosecurity. Add a Tasmania reintroduction study that faces the hard parts, prey base, disease risk, and livestock conflict with local partners on the record. Status, in lab, with the right people. But biology will take the time it takes, not the time a press release wants. Next up, not the extinction, but genetic rescue. A rhino with two females left and embryos waiting for a surrogate. Northern white rhino comeback. How close are we? Short answer, real science, fragile path. Two females remain, no males. Teams have banked sperm, collected eggs, and made embryos. The next step is a southern white rhino acting as a surrogate and carrying a calf to term. The big roadblock? Pregnancy to live calf, then more calves. Rhino pregnancies are long and demanding. Mothers need expert care before birth and after, and we must keep genetic diversity high or we paint ourselves into an inbred corner. One calf would be a miracle. A managed herd is a real goal. What would count as real progress? Announce a confirmed pregnancy in a surrogate. Document a live birth with strong newborn health numbers. Then publish a herd plan, how many calves, which lineages, and how to mix genes over time using frozen sperm and eggs and future embryos. Only then, should we talk carefully about habitat and poaching risk? Status in lab, pilot, not the extinction, but the closest real turnaround on this list. Next up, the flagship, the project the world watches, 
a cold adapted elephant proxy we call the Woolly Mammoth. Woolly Mammoth Comeback How close are we? Short answer, closer than fantasy, still a hard climb. The plan is clear. Edit Asian elephants with cold ready traits, thick hair, more insulating fat and a blood change that works in the cold. Then use assisted reproduction to make a calf. If it works, it's a proxy. Not a true resurrection, but it would be a huge scientific win. The big roadblock? Elephant reproduction and ethics. Gestation is about 22 months. Calves are rare. Surrogate elephants are endangered, intelligent and deeply social. Every embryo, every transfer, every pregnancy carries real welfare weight and real logistics. And when a calf is born, it must be tundra ready, able to keep warm, find food, fight disease and live in a real ecosystem, not just a fenced photo set. What would count as real progress? Show a viable edited elephant embryo with the target traits and have independent experts review the data. Publish a surrogate strategy. How many females? What safeguards? And how you protect social bonds and what happens if things go wrong? Then show an ecosystem plan that isn't hand wavy. A pilot site? Winter survival goals? Grazing and vegetation impacts? Partners on the record? And a multi-decade care commitment? Status? In lab with enormous visibility. Closer than fantasy. Farther than headlines. Next up, verdict. What should never be brought back, even if you could? And which project would you greenlight tomorrow? Verdict. If I could greenlight one today, it's the Northern White Rhino. Embryos exist. Surrogates are ready. It saves living animals. Everything else? Not yet. Dire wolf? Stop calling it back until there's a functional trait edit in a real animal and a breeding plan. It's a proxy, not a resurrection. Dodo. The genome is done. Now show edited chicks and a real island plan with predator control and biosecurity. Passenger pigeon. Pass edits through the primordial germ cells. Breed true and prove flocking at scale in a pilot aviary. Thylacine. Give me a live joey from embryo transfer that survives to weaning with independent veterinary oversight. Woolly Mammoth. Show a viable edited elephant embryo and a clear ethical surrogate strategy. Then an ecosystem plan that isn't hand wavy. Great orc and giant moa. Bird germline plus island logistics. Equals moonshots for now. Pyrenean ibex and gastric brooding frog. Bring a healthy, repeatable line. A birth does not equal a comeback. Now it is your turn. Comment two words. Which animal you'll green light and which animal you'll veto. And here is another video YouTube thinks you will like. Thanks for watching.